you, Carol. And good morning, beautiful Temple of Light family. Good morning, friends. Good morning, beautiful people worldwide that join us in consciousness on this love stream from the Temple of Light, Center for Spiritual Living, as we like to say in beautiful Jamaica. And perhaps this morning, as Carol read that beautiful litany by poet Campbell, you too would join us in holding the splendid daylight in your hands, inwardly grateful for a lovely day, so that together we can say, thank you, life. Thank you, God. Thank you, beingness, that we can come together and share from our hearts and our spirits the song of life, the song of praise, that is the truth of our very soul's journey. You know, over the past three months or so, I have diligently practiced the hand washing recommended as a preventive measure. And I've been very thoughtful of the symbolism of washing one's hands. I never wash my hands so often, I can tell you. But in doing so, I think of Pontius Pilate, the fifth governor of the Roman province of Judea, best known for presiding over the trial of Jesus of Nazareth. And if you recall the story, Pilate washed his hands in front of the crowd before announcing, and I quote, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. End of quote. Till today, we still say, I wash my hands of such and such, and you wish to have nothing to do with it. Shakespeare, the bard of Avon, portrays Lady Macbeth sleepwalking after she and Macbeth murdered up her. Again, the image of the washing of hands is brought to our attention. For plagued by guilt, she desperately rubs her hands together as if washing them while she cries, out, out damned spot. For years I thought that was a reference to me because I had a master at my old high school who used to order me from his class by saying, out, out damned Scott. But it, I discovered that it was a Shakespeare, a takeoff on Shakespeare, in fact, plagiarism of Shakespeare. Traditionally, the Jews are required to wash their hands and say a blessing before eating any meal that includes bread or matzah. The ritual, known as neti dat yarim, is typically done using a two handed cup, but my Jewish friends assure me that any vessel will. So, the common practice is to pour twice on the right hand and then twice on the left. Well, my friends, a few nights ago, I had washed my hands before having my supper. And then my, my little dog, Emoji, who is very demanding of my love, uh, trotted up to me and so I, I just put my right hand down <coughs> and patted her head gently. And then realized that now I had to go back and, and wash my hands again. Oh, no. So I went into the kitchen and trying to wash with my one hand, the right hand, with the soap. You know, doing this in my palm, the soap went flying out of my hand and onto the kitchen floor. So I bent to pick it up and, of course, the bone smacked it on the kitchen floor. So I was muttering under my breath, damn doll. You know, it's so funny. That's so human, isn't it? When we mess up, we blame the dog, or we, or we blame the cat, or we blame anybody else that's, that's in our vicinity, when we are the ones that actually messed up. So you may be wondering, so why didn't you just wash both hands? Well, it was a shortcut, as we so often try to take, and in Jamaica we say sometimes shortcut, turn long cut. But out of that experience came the title for this morning's encouragement. And it is a Jamaican uh, saying, one hand wash the other. And if you don't speak Jamaican, then that translates roughly as one good turn deserves another. So my friends, I think about washing hands and we use it sometimes as a metaphor for what is happening in our lives. I learned a long time ago a wonderful affirmation for when I was handling water and it is this, I quote, I, I bathe myself in appreciation and in the enlightened interpretation of my life's experiences. 
And so whenever I'm washing dishes or I'm bathing or I'm washing my hands in the, you know, COVID ritual, I just say that. I bathe myself in appreciation and in the enlightened interpretation of my life's experiences. So one good turn deserves another, and I had an experience of that this week. We use it when we want to emphasize the value of mutual helpfulness, as well as the amazing and often unexpected results that come from acts of kindness and compassion that we so often do without thinking or without looking for any kind of reward from the people who we're being kind to. And even small acts of kindness can have a significant and lasting impact. I believe it was author Washington Irving who observed that, and I quote, a kind heart is a fountain of gladness, making everything in its vicinity freshen into smiles. A kind heart is a fountain of gladness, making everything in its vicinity freshen into smiles. What a lovely affirmation. Maybe we could use that this week as part of our assignment. So important is kindness, my friends, in daily living, that the Talmud, a series of rabbinical writings put together from the first through the sixth centuries of the common era, the Talmud decrees, and I quote, deeds of kindness are equal in weight to all the commandments, unquote. But here's the thing. Before you can offer the chalice of kindness to others, you have to begin by being yourself. So many of us see to the comfort, welfare, and safety of parents, spouses, children, lovers, friends. Even our pets are pampered and spoiled, and yet we neglect ourselves woefully. Many caregivers are so emotionally drained that they are running on fumes, if not on empty, most of the time. And so remember, as you give a hand to others, to give a hand to yourself also. Let one hand wash the other, as we say. Perhaps when the master teacher Jesus said, love your neighbor as yourself, what he was really saying was, you can only love your neighbor to the extent and to the degree that you love yourself. This special time in human history, my friend, is a great time to begin again to be kind to yourself in thought, in word, and in deed. Colossians 3 verse 12 urges us, and I quote, to clothe ourselves as the elect of God with compassion and kindness. Clothe yourselves as the elect of God with compassion and kindness. And again, the master teacher Jesus reminds us when he said, know ye not that ye are gods. It's not I, John Scott, that saying, so Jesus the way sure actually assured us that we are gods. Because if we are created by God in the image and likeness of God, then we have to be a replica, a, a mini version of the macro, which is God in all its glory and all its majesty and all its greatness and its wonder and its truth. So this brings me to your assignment when I think about Colossians 3.12, clothing ourselves as the elect of God with compassion and kindness. Your assignment, your mission, should you decide to undertake it, is to make compassion a priority in your daily life this week. Make it a goal to speak and act kindly towards others. Psychiatrist Edward M. Hallowell, author of a book titled Human Moments, advises that to counter what he describes as the growing culture of rancor, we need to and I quote, bring back pleasant conversation, eye contact with strangers, family dinners, and an ability to praise people and thank them for what they do right, unquote. Have you noticed that folks are indeed making eye contact from both their masks when you pass them on the street or in the supermarket? I'm having fun looking for the twinkle in people's eyes, and I have been making a point of saying, blessed, Whenever our eyes, as you say, to make a big four. When your eye make four, or your eye make four, it means that your two eyes have met, and they look for a moment in a recognition of your humanity, and of the goodness within you, and of the, the love 
that is the truth of our inner being. And so, as you wear your masks and go out on the street, look for that compassion and that love and that joy in the eyes of people who pass you by. Smile from beneath the mask. They can feel that energy that you are emanating and allow your eyes to soften as you say, either audibly or in your heart, bless it. God be with you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. We are one. Another way of strengthening the culture of kindness that is growing out of this pandemic is to raise your gratitude quotient. We need to live in gratitude. And you can, in fact, begin right at home by expressing gratitude to those many people who make your life more comfortable and pleasant while you're venturing away at home. After a meal, express your gratitude for a well-prepared and beautifully presented meal. Perhaps the children have made an effort to be quiet while you had yet another meeting on Zoom. Thank them for being so considerate. And in the outside world, smile and, and thank, say thank you to anyone who serves you. The supermarket, the share, the gas station attendant, anybody who provides a service. And it's a nice thing to just compliment them on how they're handling themselves on the very trying and difficult circumstances. I went to a particular financial institution yesterday. I got there at three and the guard in the, in the, at the door said, I'm so sorry, sir, we close at 2.30. And I looked away, he said, we, because he works for a security company that's, that's contracted to the bank. But he said, we close at 2.30. Right away, I'm around dealing with somebody who has a sense of ownership in the job that he is doing. And I said, oh, I'm so sorry. I, I'm just picking up, here to pick up a, a document. And he said, what kind of document may I ask? And I said, it's really two checks. And he said, if you're going to cash them, they may not, uh, 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 you know, because they're closed. But give me your ID and I'll take it in for you. So he took my ID from me. He went into the bank. And he came out in two minutes and said, just wait right here, one of the bank officers will be with you in a moment. And in about 10 or 15 minutes, out came the officer, and he had the two checks in his hand. Um, one of which I didn't want to cash, so I said, what time do I have to come back on Monday morning to cash um, this check? And he said, um, just come with me, we'll cash it for you right now. This is at 3 o'clock and the bank is closed at 2.30. And in I went. And in two twos, my check had been cashed. I just said to the cashier, to the teller, and to the young man who had, who had processed the two checks for me, thank you so much for doing such a wonderful job under very trying circumstances. Because I can't even breathe sometimes behind this mask. And you managed to be so pleasant and to make the whole business of doing uh, banking an enjoyable experience. Thank you so very much. And I said, and you know, if you, if you if you are at home on Sunday morning, um, get onto Facebook Live and look for the Temple of Light, Center for Spiritual Living, and listen to our, our, our broadcast and smile and say, all right, we'll do. I know for well you might make it, but I made the gesture. And we parted with just this wonderful energy between us. So another example of, of one hand washed the other. Um, overtook me in the supermarket. I have to say it overtook me because I laugh at myself. Behind the mask, my, my, my glasses pop up sometimes. So I'm, I'm looking at a, a box of juice and I'm trying to see the sugar content, but the glasses are foggy and I'm, I'm you know, don't put your hand in the face so I'm trying to, to you know, clear the fog. And up comes a supermarket worker who says, uh, can I help you, what, you, uh, uh, what you're looking for? And I said, no, it's all right. I'm just looking for the sugar content. Notice my first reaction is to refuse her act of kindness. We do that all the time, don't we? Somebody says, let me help you. No, 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 it's all right. Because somehow we think if we accept a gesture of kindness and compassion and togetherness and humanity, it somehow makes us look weaker or less male or less less strong or less whatever. So she said, no, oh, I can help you. Sugar content. So she, she looks at the packet and she said, yeah, man, what would you say so I have sugar? I said, no, but I'm, I'm trying to avoid getting it. She said, it's a good thing because my mom, she has sugar too. 
Well, you have this, this, this drink is all right. It has 27 grams. I said to her, no, no, don't give this to mama. It doesn't mean 27 grams of sugar in the whole box. It means every serving, every glass you have is 27 grams of sugar. That's it more than she needs for the whole day. <laughs> Let us alone in one drink. She said, Lord Jesus, thank you so much. What a lovely thing stop to help you. And I again said to her, if you have Facebook and you are at home on Sunday morning, tune in to Temple of Light, Center for Spiritual Living on Facebook Live and um, listen to our service. I'm going to talk about you. So if you're listening, Gloria, big up yourself. You were wonderful and you made my whole shopping experience an absolutely amazing example of one hand washing the other. And I may never meet your wonderful, precious mother, but I know that interaction between us has ensured that at least when it comes to buying sweet drinks, you, you Gloria, will be more mindful of the sugar content of what you're giving to your loved ones. And I just think that makes me feel so good. I left the supermarket feeling, wow, I love shopping. You know how many people just throw up their face and, God, I have to go to the supermarket. For me, it's, it's an, a joyous act of discovering what's out there to be bought. Did somebody say, I shop, therefore I am? That's my motto. So, my friends, I want you just to think about this week of showing gratitude, of living that phrase, one hand, wash the other. I want you to know that it is a powerful idea that we can choose to be kind. It's a choice. We can choose to say hurtful things. We can choose, you know, to make ourselves feel bigger and better by putting other people down. Or we can choose that when people interact with us, they leave us feeling better about themselves, better about life, better about having left their home this morning with all of the pressures and all of the challenges of being human in this time and know and feel within them that it was worthwhile and met someone. I couldn't even see all of their face, but they made me feel like a valid, valuable and authentic human being. You know, we can absolutely choose that kindness. We can choose to dance with life. We can choose to sing. And as Carol shared in that beautiful poem written by the late Jamaican poet George Campbell, we can choose to hold the splendid daylight in our hands, inwardly grateful for a lovely day, as we say, thank you life. Let us just say together, thank you life. Life is so good. No matter where we're living it on the planet, life is for us, and we are in a beautiful, inextricably bound expression of that life which knows no obstacles. Thank you, life. Let us share that splendid daylight, not just, just with those who, who are close to us, but with strangers who pass us on the path. We may never know the full reach and extent of the energy we are emitting, but trust me, the law of life is perfect, and you will reap the love the kindness, the compassion, and the joy that you have so. There's a wonderful teaching story about two little boys who wanted to make a fool of a wise sage that lived in their village. So they captured a young nightingale, you know, as young boys will. And with its tail feathers protruding from one little boy's cupped hands, they determined to ask the sage whether the bird was alive or dead. If he said it was dead, the little boy would open his hands and the bird would fly free. And if the sage said it was alive, the little boy would crush it and let it fall at the sage's feet. Either way, he would look like a fool in front of the villagers. Well, one morning the villagers gathered to sit at the sage's feet to listen to the words of wisdom. And our two little smart Alex also arrived. And they said, oh, wise one, what do you think I have in my hands? And he said, well, from the look of the tail feathers protruding from your fingers, it looks like a young nightingale. And the little smarty man said, and is it alive? <laughs> or is it dead? And the sage took a long time to answer, 
as a hush fell upon the crowd. And eventually he said with a kindly smile, it's in your hands, children. It's in your hands. My friends, Dr. Ernest Holmes, the founder of this great teaching known as the science of mind and spirit, said that I quote, love is the grandest healing and drawing power on earth, unquote. I think of this when we sing how marvelous, how wonderful the universal love as manifested here in you and me. I look at you and see in you the God potential there. This is the real, the real you, this is who you are in reality. So let the infinite love shine through. This is you and you and you and you and you and everyone all across the planet. This is all of life. This is the world that must indeed come to work for all. All beings, all life, everything that exists has a place. And it is marvelous and it is wonderful that the universe and love has created it out of itself in the image and likeness of its eternity and its perfection. Emmett Fox, the Irish default spiritual leader of the early 20th century, put it this way, and I quote, If only you could love enough, you would be the happiest and the most powerful being in the world. I believe that in the same way it takes one hand to wash the other, if you want to get them thoroughly clean, so it takes our interaction with our brothers and sisters on a soul level, on a level that recognizes and honors our shared humanity and our divine origins as children of one creative, one infinite intelligence, if we truly want to create a world that works for all. Let us carry this intention in our hearts this week, remembering that the energy of love, wholeness, peace, and human kindness comes through that life which smiles upon our world by smiling through our eyes, even when we are masked. That reaches out to touch, to heal, to bless, to prosper, to love and liberate anyone who comes into contact with us in any way. And believe me, my friends, it's in your hands. It's in your hands, children. Namaste. Mm -hmm. My friends, if you're having a birthday this month, if you're a June celebrant, uh, do me a big favor and post your birth date uh, on, and your name on, on our Facebook page. And I will do a special blessing for you by name on the morning of your birthday. In the meantime, all those celebrating uh, a birthday in June, Please just put your hand on your heart now as we bless you wherever you are on this beautiful journey of one hand washing the other. Know with me that it is a joy to serve God through our hands, through our hearts, through our minds, through our very beingness. And I know for those celebrating a birthday this month that God, contemplating its own beauty, its own love, its own joy, its own compassion, its own compassion, Call these radiant souls into being and beholding them with eyes of ineffable love said, this is good, this is very good. And so this is the truth of our birthday celebrant this month. I know that from the center of their being to the circumference of their conscious awareness, they live, move, and manifest their lives in a victorious state of fulfillment to the honor and glory of God. This word is now released to law as the entire universe joins all of us in saying, happy birthday, happy earth day, happy liberty, happy you. May all your dreams and all your desires and all your loves be true. And so it is.